Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Grand Olympic Auditorium here in the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, where tonight it's top-ranked boxing on ESPN, brought to you in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser. Proud to be your bud. Let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with this first bout. All the bouts are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. First contest scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Chuck Hassett. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks and weighing in at 137 and 3 quarter pounds. He's from Houston, Texas, and brings a professional record of 14 and 3 with two draws, Six KOs to his credit, ladies and gentlemen, Luis Quickhands Ramirez. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with red trim, weighing in at 136 and one half pounds. He's from Pomona, California, undefeated with a record of 14 and 0, 13 KOs. He's a member of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Pomona Sugar, Shane Mosley. Well, here are the rules for tonight's first bout in the state of California. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight. Ten point must scoring system. Three judges will score the fight and the fighter can only be saved by the bell in the final round. And after the second round, they'll go to the scorecards in an accidental butt situation. There you get a look at Shane Mosley and Luis Ramirez. We begin round number one, scheduled for ten. These are lightweights. So far in his career, Mosley with two first-round knockouts. Ramirez has never recorded a knockout in the first round. Only six knockouts for Ramirez in his 14 professional wins. And you take a look at the ratio, and Mosley at 93%. His only decision came in March of this year in Pomona, California, a 10-round decision over Oscar Lopez, the only two rounds that Mosley's ever lost in any of his fights. He has been uh, very dominant in winning early, and of course, everyone wants to see him step up in competition to a great extent that may happen here tonight against Luis Ramirez. He feels uh, that in the last four fights, he's really put it together in terms of conditioning uh, and overall and he has had the wins in three of those four. Now Ramirez is able to lean away from a right hand there. He wants to box mostly. I mean, he, he feels that's his best stock and trade, be a boxer puncher against him. Ramirez, a natural southpaw. He said he saw Virgil Hill fight here on ESPN and many times before, and he decided to switch. Uh, to the conventional style, but he says sometimes he'll go back. Of course, Virgil Hill did. Hill very seldom switches back to lefty, but we expect Ramirez to, from time to time during his bout, he told us he said it bothers a lot of fighters, which it does. That may be the understatement of the year. Ramirez last stepped in the ring on August the 5th of this year in Houston. Seventh round knockout over Sam Miller. He was back in the gym four days later, and that's why he was able to take this fight on such short notice. What's there so far for Ramirez is when he throws a combination, Mosley kind of stops, and then the left hook is always available on the end of it as the last punch of the combo. Now here's where Ramirez doesn't want to be, against the ropes or in the corner. That's where Mosley's power can really affect him. Mosley with just the one jab there. Follows it up with a hook. It's that feeling out process in that first round. Shane Mosley has an excellent left hook to the body. We've seen it already in this first round. And it's a punishing blow. Up to the final seconds of this first round, Shane Mosley against Luis Ramirez from Los Angeles, California. Well, as you look from above, you see that left hook I talked about by Shane Mosley to the body. Uh, he gets good leverage on the punch and uh, throws it as part of combinations. 
Round number two underway. Mosley in the gold. Ramirez in the blue. We mentioned Mosley, a knockout specialist. 13 knockouts in his 14-0 record. He has four second-round knockouts in his career. Ramirez has two. You see Mosley much busier and much more active. <laughs> well, you know, it's seldom that I look at punch numbers and I'm astonished. I am actually astonished that there's such a huge difference in that last round. I would, I would have thought Ramirez did a little bit better, and yet not so. It's odd to see single digits in the punches landing. It is, especially since he, some of those combinations looked okay, but what would happen is the first two or three would be blocked, and those wouldn't count, and then the last one would land. Boy. Right hand, and then a little south of the border for Ramirez. And Ramirez just stopped there, not a thing you want to do. Especially against a puncher like Mosley. I think the power of Shane Mosley is having an impact already here on Luis Ramirez. And you can tell Ramirez is a, a skilled boxer. But is he finding the smart fight at this point? Because he seems to be standing right in front well, of Mosley. That's exactly what he shouldn't be doing. And in the first round, he was moving a lot better. His mission is to throw a combination and then get out of there. The ropes are very bad for him. Oh, the combinations. A couple of them landed in there, but Ramirez just trying to duck away, and that's going to get dangerous. And that hook, I think, just is starting to hurt Ramirez. The jab of Mosley's just spectacular right now. Well, I guess he does what all good fighters do. He snaps his jab as opposed to flicks it. And he steps in with the punch as well. Well, Shane Mosley is a guy who the people here on the West Coast have been talking about as a real bona fide contender in the near future. And we're seeing evidence of that here. That was a right hand, partially blocked by Ramirez, but it hurt him. Another right hand. The punches of Shane Mosley are short, compact, and he gets the most out of them. And good defense by Shane Mosley on the inside. Ramirez is a pretty quick-handed puncher. But they're starting to slow down because he is starting to get punished a bit here by Shane Mosley. But coming to the end of round number two, scheduled for ten. These are lightweight Shane Mosley and Luis Ramirez. The ropes, Mosley goes to work on him, especially with those left hooks to the body. And there with some quick combinations. Not everything landed, but it shows you what a bad posture it is for Ramirez when he's against the ropes. And we start this third round with Shane Mosley in the gold trunks, completely in charge. Scheduled for 10 in the lightweight division. And in between rounds, referee Chuck Hassett warned Ramirez. He said, listen, if you get hit low, keep your hands up and don't stop until I say stop. Right. Which is pretty good advice. Boy, look at the edge for Mosley. Landing 51%. Of course, anything you've been watching our show over the years, you know that with punch profile, anything 50% or over is spectacular. Remember, Ramirez landed only five punches in the first round. And you can see the strength of Mosley now just starting to wear on Ramirez. The Mosley jab has been a real effective weapon so far for him. In the first round, Ramirez was giving him a little more lateral movement, but since that time, he has been uh, more of a stationary target. Now, there was Ramirez getting in with the left hook. That's not a huge punch for him, but it landed. That's something that Shane Mosley will look at when he looks at the tape. That's one punch he's been susceptible to during the course of this fight. Mosley has been affected with that right hand over the top as well. He is throwing some body shots. Wow. Shane Mosley, unlike some young fighters who um, right there, ignore right there, the right body there. work, is going for it. Well, we saw that two weeks ago with Tracy Patterson. Uh, likes to go to the body, does good body work. There's a guy in the audience, uh, James Tony, who 
is one of the best body punchers in the business. He's hoping to tattoo Roy Jones's body a little bit in November. That is one of the great fight schedules. So many times boxing gets the rap of the top guys don't fight each other. There you have two guys in their prime. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. And, and, a, and a big part of what Tony needs to do is what uh, Mosley's been doing, which is work that body. And the jab of Mosley right now, and he's even mixing it up downstairs and upstairs. Well, it's been a very impressive performance by Shane Mosley to this point. We come to the end of this third round. It is scheduled for 10. Mosley out of Pomona, California, 14-0 with 13 knockouts. And right now he's just controlling Luis Ramirez. A graphic example of how the jab of Shane Mosley is working. And I mean, those are strong jabs pushing the head back of Luis Ramirez. And we start this fourth round, 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Shane Mosley and Luis Ramirez. Mosley, an outstanding amateur career, 285 wins, 15 losses. And he was Vernon Forrest back up for the 1992 Olympic team, Vernon out of Atlanta, Georgia. Had Atlanta, had Atlanta's own Evander Holyfield in his corner, but it wasn't enough in Barcelona. You and I uh, uh, broadcast those Olympics and uh, sat through some of the most bizarre and strangest decisions and most disappointing performances that Americans have seen in a long time. Well, right now, he cannot be disappointed with the performance of Shane Mosley. He's worked the body. He's gone up top. He's used his combinations, used his hooks. And take a look at the jab total, something you've touched upon a lot, Al. Yeah, the, the, we're landing 51%, and those are strong jabs that are getting through. Those are not light jabs. And uh, Ramirez, who really needed that punch when he came into this fight, has not had it. Now, they talk about Mosley uh, in the West Coast here. A lot of really excellent young lightweights and junior lightweights out here. Of course, Rafael Ruelas, who has uh, the IBF lightweight championship. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya, the, the WBO junior lightweight championship. Hernando Hernandez, who has the WBA junior lightweight. They're all hovering around each other in that in that weight division. And uh, even Ga uh, Gabriela Ruelas, the uh, junior lightweight uh, who is going to fight Jesse James Leha this, um, this uh, next week. These are a lot of good, young, lightweight fighters here on the West Coast. Yeah, if you want to include the Southwest, dip down to New Mexico. We have Danny Romero coming up in our main event, the NABF flyweight champion. And another left hook by Mosley, and he's just peppering away at Ramirez. Doubling and tripling with him. I like his composure. He seems just Mosley going right about his game plan at this point. And the interesting thing is... Ramirez shows you that he's a skilled fighter. He's not a powerful fighter, and I don't think he's able to move as much as he wants and box as well against Mosley. He's shown flashes of it, but he's a, he's a tough, gritty guy, and that's why he's been able to take the punishment Mosley's given him, and still punching, still throwing decent combinations, but Mosley just doing a better job. And there is some swelling under that right eye of Ramirez. It has been just attacked by the left hand of Mosley. I have to confess, and I saw Mosley as an amateur, I forgot, or he didn't at that time maybe, have his punishing a jab as he is showing in this fight. It's really spectacular. Now well, we come to the end of round number four. We're live from Los Angeles, California. The round ended. Ramirez switched to lefty. Now, if I were him, I'd do it again. Let's face it, you're in a desperate situation here. Shane Mosley's the more talented fighter. You can see that. Why not go to lefty and see if you can disrupt his rhythm? Because he's got everything going his way. This is a time when if you were a left-hander, which Ramirez is, I would employ that. The, 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 we'll take a look here at the uh, punches through four rounds. Oh, and you my. see the efficiency of Mosley, 53%. Ramirez not able to land much. He's blocking. Uh, some shots, but Mosley has just been the aggressor. But you mentioned switching to southpaw, Al. The only problem is Ramirez's right eye is, is really swollen below. If he switches to southpaw, does that expose it more? Not really, because you got the right hand right up there. And also, you have to assume Mosley's jab isn't going to land as much. Here's Al's scorecard. Uh, gee, what a surprise you have a shot at. What a shock. It is, it is indeed a shot at. Those punch numbers look like the Johnson Goldwater election returns. Mosley's corner yelling out as Ramirez tried to shake and bake with his head. The body does not move. 
meaning continue the body attack, but right now Mosley doing whatever he wishes. be impressed with the way Mosley, who is 23 years of age and still young in his professional career, has gone about his business. Okay, right there. Hold your punch. Break it. He's shown an ability as, as you look at the eye of Ramirez and how it's been punished. Mosley's shown the ability to fight on the outside and the inside, which is impressive. And I have to say that what will make this performance a better one for Mosley is that Ramirez shows no signs of giving up. He's throwing lots of punches, lots of combinations, and trying even though he doesn't have the power to contend with Mosley. Technique of Shane Mosley is excellent, though. Mosley might have gotten a thumb in the eye right there. Mosley has recorded four fifth-round knockouts. There's an uppercut that rocked back the head of Ramirez. I, boy, looking at Shane Mosley here, I have to tell you, I'd love to play a little matchmaker. I'd love to see him in against Rafael Ruelas or an Oscar De La Hoya or Gennaro Hernandez. All right, hold it there. Nobody. Ramirez is doing the smart thing there and holding on a little bit. Shane Mosley in total control. He is in the gold trunks as we come to the end of this fifth round here at the Grand Olympic Auditorium. Glad you can join us on ESPN's Top Rank Boxing. More action after this timeout. Mosley, right, he has a good right uppercut, but not necessarily a good left uppercut. He showed you how good his was right there. Let's see if he can build upon that here in round number six. It is a game Lewis Ramirez out of Houston, Texas in the blue. It's just a matter of if he can last all ten rounds. Or will Mosley just wear him down? You see in the last round, Ramirez didn't have that bad around. That was probably the most punches he's landed in a round. But look at Mosley still hovering around 50% and uh, landing some hard punches. Well, there's a left hand that rocked back Ramirez's head. And Mosley just going to work. I'm going to tell you, in the lighter weight division, I have not seen a body puncher like Shane Mosley in a long time. And, and you're going to see one in Danny Romero in our main event. Of course, he's much lower at a flyweight, but I mean, you'll see his body punching. This body punching by Mosley is as good as you're going to see anywhere. And I think more young boxers are concentrating on it, on it more. It's easy for me to say, wasn't it? You know what I meant. They're doing it more. That was what I was going to say. Well, we'll get Manuel Jesus Herrera's translator here. <laughs> Maybe you he can help me out. Get that. Tell you what, though. He won't know the language I was speaking. I'm impressed with Ramirez because he has taken some shots. And not just one shot, but combination, body shot. Oh, it keeps coming forward. I am cringing at these body shots. Just sitting here at ringside, you folks at home can feel them, you know, from these shots you get that are close up, and you can hear it from our from our microphones. But when you're sitting here at ringside, those body shots, you just almost feel them. Ramirez is, is in such a tough spot. He, on the inside, Mosley's eating it up, eating him up, and on the outside, he's having a problem okay, as well. So, where do you go? Possibly Sacramento. <laughs> oh, good right hand by Mosley. These are huge shots. Look at Ramirez. Boy, Luis Ramirez, you got to give him all the credit in the world. Hey, one thing, Ramirez is going to get some further work down the line. Some promoter is going to be watching Andrew this or Green, see work, a tape work. of this. And the kind of guy you put in there, and he gives you an honest day's effort. Well, yeah, and he's not a, he's not that he's a bad fighter. He's just not a big puncher, and he's in there against a very big puncher. And most guys would have been out by now. Ramirez was hung in there. Well, Shane Mosley continues to get better as we come to the end of round six. Just handling, handling Luis Ramirez. With this left hook to the body, but look at how the combinations flow. Bob, it's really impressive the way he uses one punch to build on for another. 
Let's see how he builds upon his round six performance as we start round seven. That right eye of Ramirez puffed now from above and below. He ate some shots in round six. And you, you reach the point in this match, as we look at the numbers, mostly dominating the last round. And, and here's the thing, Ramirez throwing 65 punches, so he's making a sincere effort. When you're throwing 94 and you're landing almost uh, way over 50%, that's just too much. And you reach the point now where you talk about Luis Ramirez for the future. You don't want him to take this beating over 10 rounds. And he, in a way, you don't, want him to, you, know, you don't want your fighter to quit, obviously, but by the same token, it's a tough beating. You almost wish he would go down. Well, Mosley has never had a knockout in the seventh round. Got just about two minutes to accomplish that. Does the frustration level build for Mosley that he no. can't take this guy out? Oh, I don't think so. And I, because he's going about his business in a very, very workmanlike fashion. And there's no law that says you're going to knock everybody out. And he, he, he's dominating this fight. This is the eighth fight in 1994 for Shane Bowles. 7-0 with six knockouts. Barring a miracle on his way to 8-0. From a strategy standpoint, there's not too much okay, right there, Luis Frank. Ramirez can do. The way he had to fight this fight was to be moving, land combinations, and get out. He's been unable to do that over the course of time. Part of that's because of Mosley. Yeah, you have to credit Mosley because when Ramirez tried to move early, Mosley had the subtle moves to cut off the ring. Exactly, and went to the body and slowed him down. When I say went to the body, I mean went to the body. This is as good a performance of body punching. Oh, look at that. I mean, those, are, those are huge shots downstairs. Oh, another one, a right hand. Look at that. They are wearing Ramirez down. We are watching from Shane Mosley, I think, the emergence of a very fine young lightweight. We've been looking forward to seeing him, and uh, he didn't draw an easy opponent, and he is handling him very easily. He has a lot in common with Danny Romero, who we're going to see in our, our main event, who burst on the scene here with us about three or four or five months ago. Well, when you look up the word tough in the dictionary, there's probably a picture of Luis Ramirez as he eats more punches here at the end of round number seven. What a performance by Shane Mosley. ESPN's top-ranked boxing here in Los Angeles. Ten rounds in the lightweight division. Shane Mosley in the gold trunks. And Luis Ramirez out of Houston, Texas in the blue. And Mosley has been outstanding through the first seven rounds of this fight, getting better with each round. The body shots have been ferocious. Through seven rounds, look at the numbers. Amazing. Over 50% for Mosley out throwing. And in the last round, just to punctuate that, he outlanded uh, Ramirez 59 to 18. I don't know, in, num in terms of numbers, if we've had a fighter come on this show and uh, give better numbers right off the bat. Landing three times more punches than Ramirez. And the only, the only guy that maybe came uh, came up to this point closely was Danny Romero in his first, we're told, by Punch Profile. And they know. They know all and see all. Bob Pinobio, Logan Hobson. And their L.A. gear, they punch the numbers. They have to ice their fingers. We're always keeping track of Shane Mosley. That's for sure. It's amazing because most of the quote-unquote opponents, like Ramirez is in this case, would have been out of here a long time ago. Yeah, and you know, Shane Mosley hasn't just fought a bunch of guys that can't fight. Mauro Gutierrez, who's a pretty good fighter, he knocked him out in nine. He beat Narciso Valenzuela in five, a guy who fought uh, De La Hoya. And in fact, I'm th I think had De La Hoya down early yes, in the fight. He did. did he not? Um, okay, he knocked him out. He, he beat Oscar Lopez in ten rounds. So... Another right hand, body shot, Mosley just picking his spot. Mosley 
now step up in class maybe in the next fight or two fights down the line? Well, I'm sure they want to do that, and I'm sure they feel right now they'd like to get him in with some of those named people I suggested. I'm sure they feel like Shane Mosley could fight for a title in the next six to eight months. <clears throat> Whether he would get that opportunity remains to be seen, but... As I said, there are many good lightweights and junior lightweights here on the West Coast. Mosley switched to South Hall a little bit. Now Ramirez goes to lefty. It's almost like that gave him the idea. But now he's back to righty. I think he made a big mistake by not doing that earlier. We come to the end of round number eight, Mosley and Ramirez. And in round number eight, Ramirez back to single digits as far as punches landed. You can't land any when you're getting hit. Man, he's going to be over 50% for this fight, it almost looks like. And that is spectacular. Look at the way he cut the ring off there. I mean, he, he feel, it feels like Mosley wants to try and get him out of there. And I'll tell you what, I have to say, you can almost make the case if you are in uh, Ramirez's corner that, uh, well, he got hit low there. Chuck Castle could have let him uh, have a red guy, right? Yeah, he's got a tough enough. You can almost make the case if you're in Ramirez's corner that you want to stop this fight. Because he has taken a real pounding. Well, they felt the opportunity to fight on ESPN's top-ranked boxing. That's why they took the fight on short notice. And I guess they don't want to throw in the towel uh, with Ramirez's performance. And, and, you know, he has punched back even right up until this ninth round. And he's shown some movement considering the body shots he's been hit with. Yeah, I mean, you can tell Luis Ramirez is a, is a fighter that has some skills. Not a lot of power, and that will hinder him as he goes on. But I also think he might not be in the absolute best condition. I think he says he's in the best condition he's been in, but there might be a ways he can still go. Yeah, he was a little thick around the midsection when he came in. You know, a little bit. See, Mosley is an ounce of fat on him. Another left hand. That right eye of Ramirez is just a mess. And for Mosley, this is valuable work. He's only been 10 once in his life against Oscar Lopez, going the distance there. Let go, let go, Lewis. Hold it there. And the impressive thing also about Mosley is no drop off in either the number of punches or his accuracy as this fight has gone on. Swinging out of that corner. Didn't land anything. Okay, break play, break play. Get a look at that eye. It's been closing since about the third round. Be very impressed with the work of 23 year old Shane Mosley. This might have been Ramirez's most active round. And let's listen into the corner of Shane Mosley. Throwing vicious body shots. They're saying they're going to run you to throw body shots. Boy, I'll tell you what. He has to be. Work the body shot. That corner's a tough crowd. Uh, Jack Mosley in that corner along with Victor Valenzuela. We start this 10th and final round. So we want you to be impressive, uh, at least for my seat. I've been impressed. He does, he does not have to do anything else to impress me. I am duly impressed with what he's done. And the interesting thing is the body work. I mean, they talked about it. He has just been really accurate and powerful with those. That's a double left hook that's spectacular. On a combination to the chin, and Ramirez is hurt. 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14 unanswered punches. They may have to step in. Chuck Cassidy may have to step in. And Ramirez holds on. He's going to let it continue. Right. They can make a case for stopping this. In fact, they should. That's it. Well, Mosley listens to instructions, that's for sure. He went after Luis Ramirez, and, and what made it work, and it is interesting, we talked about how he'd been throwing body shots, but he did step it up and actually used that as a stepping stone to knocking his opponent out, and he threw, he threw body shots that were intended to literally get the guy out of there, and it did. Well, a little Big Ten college football for you from the Big Ten Northwestern. You take a look at the end of the fight, Al. This is where the fight ended with Shane Mosley setting it all up with body punches, very impressive body punches, and then would get Ramirez in so much trouble that there was no way he could respond. And ultimately, Chuck Cassidy had to step in and stop the fight, which he did. Ramirez just in all kinds of trouble, on the ropes, holding on, trying to do anything he could to survive, and the, it would be ended. So Shane Mosley gets the gloves off, and we are set for the official time of the stoppage. Here's our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chuck Bassett has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, 45 seconds of round number 10. The winner by knockout victory, his 14th KO, his 15th victory, still undefeated, Sugar Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley, a winner. He is now 14-0, 15-0 with 14 knockouts as he stops Luis Ramirez in round number 10. Shane Mosley, very impressive in his performance this evening. Here's our own Al Bernstein. Bob, uh, Shane Mosley and his dad, Patrick Ortiz, his manager and promoter here. I'm the manager. The, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Promoter. promoter, you're the manager. All right, we'll get this all straight. Don't worry about it. There, uh, this performance by you, I, we thought, was extremely uh, impressive, and yet you seemed like you wanted almost more from it. Yeah, um, I went to throw a lot, a lot more punches. I threw a lot of punches, but I went to, to get a lot more uh, harder shots in because he was doing a lot of moving. It, it seemed like he didn't want to, really want to stay there and fight with me. So it's kind of hard for me to get the, the shots that I wanted. Can you blame him? <laughs> no, I can't. But I, was, I was trying to throw a lot of punches upstairs, get him thinking about the punches upstairs, then eventually drop to the, bo to the body. Well, let's take a look, Shane, and you can comment as we take a peek at it down there. Uh, some of the work you did both downstairs and upstairs. Yeah, you know, like, right, like what I said, I was trying to throw a lot of combinations to the head. In the tenth round, I made my mind, I said, I got to stop this guy, you know. I have to get a knockout. So for the whole uh, tenth round, I was going to throw nothing but hard shots. Just press him, keep pressing him. And, uh, and I knew he was going to quit. I thought he might have quit early. But he didn't. He willed it. But he, he quit in the end. Well, he did ultimately. Your dad, Jack Mosley, does in fact train you. Uh, you told him in that last round, and we listened in, go right out, throw even more body shots, and he had thrown a lot of, to that point. Yeah, I told him to go out, throw more body shots, not throw caution to the wind, not slug or anything like that, but throw more body shots, put pressure on this guy, and this guy will give it up. And he did exactly that. I want to say hi to everybody at the main lab, uh, Doc 2, and then the mini warehouse, and uh, I'll see yeah. you guys Tuesday. Yeah, I'd right. like to say hi. To, uh, it's a double promo here. Go ahead. <laughs> I'd like to say hi to everybody at home. You know, I'd like to say hi to my son if he's watching me. How you doing, little Shane? All right. And uh, everybody, all my fans, Raymond, Zach. Uh, Zach, he's doing well. Good, yeah. Zach right. Bidea, world champion, he's doing well. Zach, yeah, thanks thanks talk, a lot. We're going to talk about Zach a little later. Real quickly, what's next for him? Okay, like Patrick said, we're proud to be on the undercard of the forum, USA, and maybe an HBO date. Oh, you wouldn't be on that network, would you? Well, we'll try. <laughs> all right, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. All right.